Hello everyone. Welcome back. <clears throat> right, let's just continue uh, from where we left off. We are uh, on page 38 in your PDFs. The daily tasks of leading uh, or running a worship ministry. So we looked at the task of scheduling, rostering teams, uh, the task of pastoring your team members. And the third task is the task of meeting with your pastor. It's again in connected with the uh, four areas of uh, relationship that we need to focus on. One of them being uh, your relationship with the pastor. And the task of meeting with the pastor constantly, uh, regularly, uh, is ensuring that you are constantly communicating with your pastor and, uh, and you're keeping him updated. And so that is one of the tasks of leading the worship ministry. And um, if that's not possible, you can always keep him posted, communicate via email or call, uh, whatever, is, whatever is convenient and possible at that time. Okay, so that's another task of communicating um, with your senior pastor, meeting with him, etc. And then the other task of budgeting and paying for resources. Um, so what does this have to do in worship ministry? You're wondering, isn't it? Uh, the task of budgeting and uh, paying for resources? Uh, what does that mean, right? So there is the administrative part to the worship ministry as well, now, which we'll go a little deeper into administrative uh, responsibilities in the next chapter. But um, for example, uh, let's say we have a worship team retreat happening uh, and uh, we want, we, you know, I want to take the worship team to a location um, just to have this retreat for a day or a two. So I'm going to start looking for venues for different, say, uh, campsites or resorts or, or whatever, uh, whichever place can accommodate the team, 50 people or so. So I'm going to get a quote from them. I'm going to get a quote for the venue. I'm going to get a budget for the food. I'm, I might even get the budget for the transport. Um, and if, what else? A stationary. Um, if, there, if, we need, if we need anything for the games to buy anything like a ball or something. And so I put together a budget for the worship team retreat approximately 50,000 rupees and uh, you know you send it to pastor and the accounts team for approval uh, and then you know once okay they approve it everything went well you go for the retreat you come back and the responsibility doesn't end there is you make sure that you have to pay the vendors right so you have to pay for the pay the vendors pay for the resources uh, or or any you know um, anything that you might use uh, to help your ministry that needs to be paid for court charts uh, equipments etc so the task of budgeting and paying for resources is another responsibility in leading the worship ministry so it's not always um, flowers and lights and stage and uh, and cool things <laughs> okay it's a lot of administrative work behind the scenes uh, the task of planning music for the year, for the week, and for the year. Uh, you know, so again, you look at any special occasions, uh, celebrations that will be happening in the church, uh, anniversary Sunday. Uh, of course, you will have Good Friday, Easter, uh, Christmas, um, New Year's, and during the month of Christmas, we'll have outreach uh, programs uh, or a Christmas concert. Um, all these different things. So you plan the music. Okay, what are we going to do here? What are we going to do there? Uh, why? Because if we're going to, if you're planning on doing a big Christmas outreach, like a Christmas concert or whatnot, the team cannot practice in the month of December. The practice has to start at least a couple of months earlier. So having a plan uh, for music uh, for the week, for a month, or for the entire year again gives you a plan uh, an insight to see ahead of what's coming and plan accordingly okay and all of this is not going to happen in one day planning music for the week or for the year 
it's uh, it, it's 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 a process uh, that you know that you might have to meet with and uh, meet and discuss with your senior pastor. If you have a core team uh, with your worship team, that as well meet with them. Okay, discuss what needs to be done, what can be done, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, the task of planning music for the week and for the year, the task of sharing in the wider pastoral work of the church. That's the sixth point. The task of sharing in the wider pastoral work of the church. Uh, you know, we cannot say that oh, I'm only the worship pastor, so I'm not going to do hospital visits. I'm not going to go to the funerals or weddings, purchases. Uh, pre I'm not going to do premarital counseling, etc., etc. Uh, you know, but we take responsibility. We share in the wider pastoral work of the church. You're supporting each other's ministry, right? Uh, we remember that. Uh, a need doesn't necessitate a call for you to meet the need. Uh, for example, now this is very important, is that you have to know your primary roles and responsibilities of your job description. Okay, so you, if you as a worship pastor, you know your roles and responsibilities, that is, for example, let's say you're working on the roster and it has to be sent out today um, and it's urgent, and then if someone comes along and asks for help, uh, it's okay for you to explain the situation to them and say no. Because, you know, you can go and help uh, other people, but not at the cost of uh, your uh, sacrificing your work. Where if you don't, if I don't send out the roster today, what can happen is that they're going to, there's going to be confusion and chaos. Okay, who's doing what? The setup team, the sound and the setup team is dependent on me to send the roster on time so they can plan the equipments, the stage plot, who's going to stand where, whatnot. The media team needs to know the roster, of who's leading, what's the band like, um, and and so if the roster doesn't go out, nobody is going to know who's leading worship. If nobody knows who's leading worship that means the song lyric document is not going to be sent to the media team uh, so if if me not doing one of my responsibilities on time it's going to affect it's going to have a ripple effect on all the other teams that's going to set them back so i want to help but uh, at first i want to make sure that i'm also helping but doing my job on time so once the, if all that is sorted uh, you know, and if there is a responsibility that can that is not urgent and immediate, uh, if you can lend your hand to uh, other areas, uh, you know, of ministries in the church, uh, it is very important that you do so. Okay, so the task of sharing in the wider pastoral work of the church is essential, and then the task of honing your musical and leadership skills. There are two aspects to it. Uh, as a worship pastor, you are a musician and you are also a leader. So you need to work on two aspects um, you know, of, of your skill set. You need to grow as a musician. Uh, what, are you going, what are you doing about it? Uh, when was the last time you uh, practiced your keyboard or, 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 your, or your singing? Uh, are you doing your vocal warm-ups uh, every day? Uh, are you practicing your guitar? Are you learning something new on the acoustic guitar or electric guitar, whichever instrument uh, you know it is? So, not forgetting that you're a musician, you're leading. You're, you know, you lead worship. Are you um, building the repertoire of songs? Uh, you know, are you exploring? <clears throat> are you writing songs? All of that verses, and also your leadership skills. Uh, you know. I don't know how many books there are out there in uh, on leadership. Um, John Maxwell alone has I, I don't know how many from uh, thirteen steps to leadership to twenty seven to twenty four ways to being a good leader. Pick one and uh, make sure you're growing as a leader in leadership skill set. Pick uh, pick a topic uh, if you know as a leader that. Uh, your challenge is confronting people because you want to be that nice person. Uh, you know, my challenge is uh, I'm a very nice person, but because I'm a nice person, people take advantage of me. I don't know how to con confront people or give constructive uh, criticism. Uh, and so work on that. 
you know, uh, so see if there's a material that is available online or if there's a book that is written or if there's a person, uh, a mentor that you can approach to and sit and talk with saying, I, this is my challenge. How can I grow as a leader in this specific area of my, uh, of my life? And so you're constantly honing your skill in that area as well. So um, the task of honing your musical and leadership skills are very essential in um, leading worship ministry okay so very quickly uh let's go through the entire list of uh the tasks of running a worship ministry just just seven this is the list really doesn't stop here okay the list really doesn't stop here it goes on uh but it's just a general uh, generic few points so that is scheduling uh pa pastoring your team members meeting with the pastor budgeting uh, planning music for the entire year, sharing in the wider pastoral work of the church, and the task of honing your musical and leadership skills. Okay, uh, are you all with me? Everybody, okay? Okay. All right. I think that is yes. Uh, let's move into chapter four. Chapter four. Um, worship ministry the organizational aspect of it all right uh, so we're going to go um, deeper into the practical aspects of worship ministry so here this is the structure uh, in chapter 4 if you look at page in page 40 um, you you will see how um, the organizational chart is uh, designed. Okay, so from right on top, we have the senior pastor under whom uh, whose supervision there's the worship pastor, and uh, under whose supervision there's the band, there's the sound team, there's the media team that's the slides, LCD projector, um, the singers, the, even the IT team to a certain extent uh, will is responsible and then you have the congregation okay and this is the structure of the worship team the very first page of chapter four okay so uh, having this organizational chart will help us uh, okay figure out okay uh, this is where we're at and this is uh, you know we know who to go to if something is not working All right, is something uh, we can hold them accountable if uh, something is not right or if something is right. Okay, so now that the organizational chart is sorted, um, let's move on. Uh, remember, this is going to get more practical. Um, it's more intentional uh, in terms of how the worship ministry is organized and how, sh how it should be organized, okay? So um, the role of the pastor, this is talking about the senior pastor. The role of uh, the pastor uh, is the one who ultimately is responsible to God for the church. So the worship team comes under his pastoral oversight. So he provides general vision, direction, and motivation. Right? So vision, direction, and motivation. He shares the goals for worship ministry with the team and sometimes gives the worship pastor the plan of messages for the year so that the team can prepare appropriate songs. Okay, so uh, pastor will share the pulpit plan or the sermon plan for the entire year and based on which we can um, prepare the team as well in introducing new songs, um, etc. So this is the role of the, one of the responsibilities of the senior pastor is to give a vision, direction and motivation. Okay. Um, <clears throat> his role to teach the congregation on worship is also essential. So the pastor should teach on worship, reason why we worship, biblical expressions of worship, etc. in the church on a regular basis so the congregation can receive the re revelation of on worship. So, uh, you know, one would think that it is uh, the worship pastor's responsibility to teach um, and do everything, but no, it's also 
the senior pastor's responsibility more so uh, is to uh, if you want your church to be a worshiping church um, you teach on that subject uh, you know you help them and under, understand the importance and the power of worship etc okay and all of this is in line in context with the response with, with the worship ministry yes okay uh, so once the role, uh, once we've understood the role of the senior pastor, now let us look at some of the roles of the worship pastor. Okay, some of the roles of the worship pastor. Uh, the worship pastor as a priest. Worship pastor as a priest. Um, so, a priest was uh, like a bridge builder. Right in the tabernacle of Moses, it was the high priest. Uh, so the tabernacle in itself was the meeting place, right? That's what we learned. It was the meeting place, like a bridge between heaven and earth. Uh, and and so when the high priest went into the holy of holies once a year on the day of atonement to pour the blood of an and of the animal on the mercy seat, the high priest was representing the people when he went in. When he came out of the tabernacle, he was representing God to people. Right? And so there was a bridge. Uh, so the high priest or the priest was a bridge builder, so to say. Okay? So the word priest may project images of flowing robes, clerical colors, or even ephods and glistening headdresses. Uh, Okay, so, but that's not what it is uh, in this day and age. That's the image we get when we use the word priest. Uh, but as I mentioned, a priest is a bridge builder. Uh, and so you are constantly thinking of ways on how can I build bridges between communities, between the congregation and the team, uh, from the platform uh, on, from the stage to the church, uh, congregation down. What can we do? Uh, what can I do as a priest to build the bridge uh, be, uh, between, uh, you know, between the congregation and the team? So, uh, as a worship pastor, uh, we have to remember that we are, uh, we are we have the responsibility of a priest. And as the worship pastor, the worship pastor as a prophet, we challenge the church to follow Jesus and actually be His disciples. So the word prophet may sim uh, similarly to the word priest above conjure up an image of a bearded figure with justice in his heart and sharp uh, words in his mouth. Uh, but we'll keep that aside again. Um, forgive me for going back to First Chronicles chapter twenty-five, uh, verse one. It says, uh, "David and the generals of the army set apart." The sons of Asaph, Heman, and Jeruthun for the ministry of prophesying, right? Uh, with the harps and lyres, uh, with their instruments, basically. And so, uh, and I'm sure you've already learned uh, the importance of prophetic ministry, uh, you know, hearing God's voice uh, and declaring His word, how to move in the prophetic, and all of that. And so, we understand what prophetic is and what and what the role of the prophet is. And so, as worship pastors, we function as a prophet as well. Okay, uh, we we either speak it or sing it uh, by inspiration. So, worship pastor as a priest, worship pastor as a prophet, worship pastor as a teacher. Right, we teach people as well. We teach your, our team members. Uh, we educate our church about worship and what it means to be a worshiping Christian. And worship pastor. As a pastor, okay. uh, you, we are called. We are called to shepherd our people, um, and that means that means it takes time, it takes patience. Um, we need a lot of strength. We need a lot of wisdom. Uh, we we need discernment. Uh, we need all the help we can get as pastors. Um, no, no, forget that as a worship pastor, you're not your responsibility is not just to lead worship. We've learned that so far, but it is also a responsibility to pastor. Okay, we care for our community of people. 
and worship pastor as intercessor. We pray more than we say, and this dominates our leadership lifestyle. Worship pastor as an intercessor, it doesn't sound very fancy, right? Uh, intercessors are those backbones uh, you know, of so many ministries that who intercede uh, for people who stand in the gap. Uh, and wage war in the against uh, against the principalities, uh, you know, of of the spirit realm. And so, as a worship pastor, we are not to forget that we are intercessors as well. And as a worship pastors, we are also mentors. Uh, recently, uh, in APC uh, this year, we did a series on uh, mentorship, mentoring people, um, the biblical approach to mentoring people. Uh, and so as a worship pastor, not to forget that, uh, you know, you are a mentor to, or people will look up to you as a mentor. And so there is uh, a mentoring progression that is mentioned in the notes that is popularly followed. And I've added that because it has helped me uh, in, you know, in, in how I uh, choose to mentor people. Okay, and, and the mentoring progression is simply this. Uh, I do it. You watch me do it. I teach you to do it. Now you do it with me, and I do it with you. You do it on your own, and now you mentor others. Uh, this is a, a very simple progression that seems to have worked worldwide, and uh, and I can say that it's worked with me as well. Okay, so uh, you do it, and then you let the mentee watch you do it and then you teach uh, the person uh, how to do it and then you let them do it with you and then the roles change uh, you do it with them and now you do it on your own now it's your responsibility to uh, train others and the final role uh, as a worship pastor is a worship pastor as an administrator Okay, um, so scheduling teams is an administrative role. Uh, getting budget for the venues, planning the worship team retreat, uh, all of that is uh, an administrative part uh, of of your role, right? Um, some of the administrative tools that can help, uh, as mentioned, is the scheduling tool like planning center, etc a set planning tool, a community building tool, a core team that will help you, uh, you know, accomplish and achieve what you want to do uh, in your church through your worship ministry. Okay, so seven different roles. Worship pastor as a priest, as a prophet, a teacher, pastor, intercessor, mentor, and an administrator. Welcome to worship ministry, guys. Okay, uh, how many of you are excited about worship ministry? It's exciting. Right, uh, any questions, any thoughts that you want to ask? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I know we've discussed uh, quite a bit on the administrative. Uh, you know, it's been enough information about the responsibilities and the roles of the responsibilities of a worship pastor and worship ministry. I, I do. I would not want it to be an overload of information, but uh, just just really wanted to sink in. Uh, you know about the responsibilities of worship ministry. Okay. All right. Uh, let's move on then. Uh, some of the role of the worship team uh, members. Um, what 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 are some of the qualifications um, of uh, individual uh, to, for them to be part of a worship team members? Is uh, have a firm commitment to the team to be regular and present whenever required. Rehearsal, pre-service prayer, 
have attitude of enthusiasm and cooperation must be open to receive correction instruction uh, and submitted to the authority of the worship pastor and pastor must be flexible musically so um, all of that can be expounded uh, in itself uh, have a firm commitment to the team uh, you know, when we have the audition process here at APC, one of the things uh, we don't put up a, a sign board that says anyone who wants to join the worship team, please come aboard. Everybody's welcome aboard. No, we don't do that. Uh, but we have an audition process. And, and those who want to register for the audition, one of the questions that we ask is how long have they been attending APC? And the minimum requirement is three months at least three to six months but three months minimum uh, now that question that is just to check if they've actually been committed to church for at least three months and they want to make this their home make APC their home church now if they are bouncing all over the place and they don't know you know they're just testing and checking which church they want to belong to um, it's very easy to know that they are not committed and they cannot be committed or they're not ready yet. So commitment is huge when it comes to uh, having a member, a team member on the worship team. Uh, so remember this one thing, uh, people, it, it's very easy. It's very, very easy to add to a team than to undo a team. Okay, uh, because I'll say that again, it's very easy to add to a team than to undo a team. Because it's undoing a knot is never fun, isn't it? And, uh, you know, it, I have made mistakes where, you know, I, I think, oh, Lord, I think I've made a mistake having this person on the team because of their character and their integrity and their attitude, uh, which, will, which will affect the dynamic of the entire team and eventually the church because of that person's unhealthy attitude and behavior. Uh, right, so it's very important to take things slow, have the right person on the team, um, check their attitude, their character, their integrity, all of that matters. And they must be flexible musically. Um, if they're going to be part of the worship team, that means one of their responsibility will be to sing or play an ins instrument. Um, do they have good command uh, over their instrument? Are they investing in themselves? Uh, right, singers are, from what I've seen, what I've experienced is, is that they hardly invest in themselves. Yeah, I sing, you know, I sing at home, I sing in the bathroom, I, I sing, so that's enough. I don't need to go for, to classes, I don't need to learn to breathe well, properly. Uh, I don't need to understand the difference between head voice and the chest voice. Uh, you know, I just sing, whatever comes, uh, you know. I'm not going to work on my timing. I'm not going to work on my pitch. Um, so this is all for the singers out there. Invest in yourself. Okay. Uh, I know musicians. They, 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 okay. They'll at least go for some classes initially to just learn the guitars or the keyboards, and then they'll eventually move on to YouTube and learn from there on. But invest in yourself, and that will help you be flexible musically. Okay, and uh, this is not a music class. I can talk a lot about it, the importance of being flexible. Um, so, yeah. All right, um, let's move on. <clears throat> uh, practice is personal and rehearsal is relational. So what is the difference between practice and rehearsal? Because a worship team will have to meet for rehearsal, isn't it? Um, so can uh, anyone say the difference between practice and rehearsal? Practice and rehearsal, practice versus rehearsal. So practice is what you yeah what you do at home and rehearsal is with the team. So uh, if the worship leader sends out the set list or the song list on Tuesday morning, uh, and so the elect from Tuesday and the worship team is going to meet for rehearsal on Saturday. So from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, the musicians 
practice at home, they learn their songs, they learn their parts, their guitar parts, the keyboard parts, the drum parts. So they practice the songs at home. Right? Practice is what happens at home. Rehearsal is you what is what you do with the team on Saturday morning. Right? You you do not come to a rehearsal on a Saturday morning, say, and then learn try and learn the song there. You know, you, you come there and say, Oh no, I didn't listen to the song. So what's what are the chords in this song? Um, that is not the place or the time to ask or learn the song. Rehearsal is not the time to learn the song. Rehearsal is where you learn to play that song together as a team and make necessary changes, uh, you know, when when needed. But um, but you practice and you work on the song at home. Okay, so that is the that's the one responsibilities and the role of a musician, worship team members, uh, is that and. You know that in turn is going to help them be skillful because as we learned in first chronicles 25 musicians were skillful they were all skilled uh you know they had the ability to do something well and so when when you are skillful and when your heart is in the right place it becomes very easy to combine skill with the biblical truth and that's going to have a powerful impact uh, on the church in building a healthy environment of worship, right? Skill versus biblical truth. Uh, what happens most of the time is emphasis is given on one thing or the other. For example, okay, you know, skill is not important. It's okay if you can't sing and pitch, if you can't sing on time, no problem. But as long as you have the heart for worship, that is all that matters, brother. Just your heart. Uh, versus on the other side of the spectrum is skill, 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 skill. Okay, it has to be perfect, has to be perfect. Uh, everything has to be great. We have to sound like tight and, and you know, amazing, uh, but have no heart of worship. We want to do it for all the glory. We want to do it for the fame. We want to do it because we want to be seen. We like to be seen, etc., etc. right? Uh, but that's the balance we want to strike is skilled musicians with a heart of worship or worshipers with a heart of worship who are striving and thriving uh, to be skilled musicians where, where we cannot where we are not satisfied at the level where we are at we are constantly seeking to grow and improve in these areas are you with me okay and so when that happens you will see all these uh you know skills in a worship leader you will see that um uh, they practice, they are effective, uh, you know, musically, uh, they are organized, they are well prepared, uh, you know, they are reliable, um, and, uh, you know, their, their character, their integrity is not questioned, uh, and you see God's grace over their lives. All right, um, so guys, actually, with this, I'll stop. I know this is a lot of information today. Um, uh, practical information, but uh, I hope it helps, uh, you know, in just a little bit more insight into the worship ministry part of it. And it's going to get a lot more practical as we progress from chapter to chapter. Okay. All right, so I'll just stop here. Uh, but thank you for joining. We'll resume next week on the same chapter. All right. Thanks, guys. God bless you. Have a good day.